Last week, a Christian friend of mine updated his Facebook status to ask, if you don't have faith in Jesus Christ, what are you living for? Now, this is the sort of thing that I'm sure my fellow atheists have heard from religious friends and family a lot. People, without meaning any harm, tend to assume that whatever it is that gives their life meaning is the only thing that can give anyone's life meaning. Well, my friend didn't quite realize how bigoted his statement was to assume that any non-Christian cannot possibly have a meaningful life. So I wanted to, again, in the interest of, of being positive in this discussion, talk about the things that give my life meaning as a person who doesn't believe in God. There are things that make life matter, that make you want to get up in the morning, that make you want to go places and do things, that make you want, in my case, to, to write and to, to create and to talk and to make these videos that, that not many people will see, but that still matter to me. And they have nothing to do with God, with religion, with any sort of supernatural belief or faith position or, or, or claims of, of knowledge that I cannot possibly have. And they probably have nothing to do with things that you care about. Because meaning is tailored to individuals. The things that make my life really, really great and really meaningful and really worthwhile to me may, may mean absolutely nothing to you. Whether you're an atheist or a Christian or a Muslim or a Jew or whatever. That's part of this, the, the basic nature of human existence is that it's all experienced subjectively. And whether I believe in Christ or not, it doesn't change the, the, the ability for me to derive great meaning and great pleasure from my life. I live every day for my wife, who I love, for my cat, who's sitting on the floor right there. You can't see her. She's not fucking anything up at the moment, so I'm thankful for that to her. I live to be with my friends, to work with my, my good friends at uh, Neon Real Entertainment and to continue to write and produce independent film. I, I live to engage, to, to have discussions, to talk about religion and to talk about Christianity and atheism, to talk about politics, to write about all this stuff on my blog and on other outlets that I'm very fortunate enough to have. To get to know people on YouTube and over the internet, you know, these great, wonderful people that I've met over the last, especially over the last year, people like the Felt Begon and like Precambrian Lullaby and like the great Jim Howard, the inventor of the blog who watches this stupid stuff that I do. These great people and, and to watch people who I haven't had a chance to interact with personally as much but who I've seen their work and really admire like like uh, Dick Coughlin and the True Puka and Dark Matter and the, all these and the Thinking Atheist and all of these things that, that, that may be completely meaningless to a Christian, especially a Christian who isn't interested in this conversation, but give my life a great deal of purpose and a great deal of meaning. And, and just in a more general sense, I just want to see what happens. Think of, of, of the era that we live in. We're on the leading edge of technology, of discovery. I was an astronomy nut from the time that I was small enough that I'm actually below the frame line. I, I mean, since I was four or five years old, my mother gave me an astronomy book and I was hooked instantly. And since that time, in the 25 years or so that have gone by since, that much time, that much time relative to the age of the Earth, relative to the age of the universe, we have discovered so many things that I never would have imagined. When I was a little boy, there were nine planets. There were nine planets, and they were all orbiting our star, the sun. Now, there are eight proper planets orbiting the sun. There are thousands of other objects that don't qualify as planets, that are comets, that are asteroids, that are dwarf planets, that are other kinds of objects that we didn't even know about when I was a kid. When I was a kid. Things that when, when my parents and grandparents were children, we could have never even fathomed were out there. There are hundreds, perhaps thousands, pending their confirmation of the discoveries, of planets orbiting other stars, orbiting stars out there in the universe that we never knew were there before. And, and all of those discoveries, the recent, the recent discoveries of planets orbiting other stars, they're all 
based on observations of, of just particular pieces of the sky. There's that beautiful uh, Hubble Space Telescope photograph, the, the ultra deep field with all of those galaxies. Uh, every object that you see in, in the picture is a galaxy. Every single speck of color, every point of light that looks like a star or a smudge is a galaxy of hundreds of billions of stars. And that photograph was taken of that much of the sky. Just a few degrees of the visible sky. That's how full the universe is of stuff. And that's how much that we've learned just in the last couple of years. Does that give my life meaning? Absolutely. I want to see what happens. I want to know what else there is out there. I want to see what else we discover. I want to make it. I hope I live long enough. I'm not always very optimistic about our manned space program. I hope I live long enough to see somebody, anybody, step foot on the surface of another planet. I would love to see someone walk on Mars. I don't care if they're an American, I don't care if they're Chinese, I don't care if they're Russian, I don't care what they are. Nationality is irrelevant. I want to see a human being walk on Mars. And that, that, that hope, that expectation, gives my life a great deal of meaning. The finite nature of life, the brevity of life, is what gives it meaning to me. It, the, the idea, the, not just the idea, the knowledge, the certainty, the at times really depressing, terrible certainty that you have a beginning point to your life and then not too long after that you have an end point where you're done and your memories and your experiences and your loves and your hates and your passions and everything that gives your life meaning and purpose will cease to exist along with your consciousness, along with you as a person. That gives life meaning, to know that I'm not always going to be here, to know that there's nothing to look forward to after this. That gives my life meaning. That's what makes a flower in spring so beautiful, because you know it's not always going to be there. That's what makes your, your, your relationships with family and friends so precious because you know that they're not always going to be there and you know that you're not always going to be there. And as depressing as it is and as difficult as it is to accept that sometimes and as tempting and as cathartic as it is to shake your fist at the sky and say, why me? Why, why can't I stay here forever? Why can't everything work out just the way I want it to? That's what gives life meaning and beauty. The fact that you only get so much of it and then you don't get any more. That gives life meaning to me as someone who doesn't believe in God, doesn't believe in anything supernatural, who is a strong atheist. And the fact that human life itself is such a local phenomenon. The universe isn't filled with people. It may be filled with life. It may be filled with intelligent life and, se and sentient life, but it is not filled with human beings. The only human beings are right here on this earth. And look at this picture back here. This is a picture, this is, I'm sure we've all seen this picture before. This is the famous pale blue dot photograph taken by one of the Voyager spacecraft as it exited or was uh, on its way to exiting the solar system. And uh, it swung around and took a photograph of the planet Earth. And that pale blue dot in that beam of sunlight is us. And I'm sure we've all seen this picture before. It was made very famous by the great Carl Sagan, who wrote an entire book uh, off of off of this uh, photograph. And it's a, it's a great book that you should all read. It's, it's up there with Cosmos and uh, Demon Haunted World, as far as Carl Sagan books go. And um, everything that has ever happened to you, to me, everything that ever happened that you ever had any chance of hearing about, happened on that pale blue dot. There's another picture. That's a little bit <laughs> a little bit closer. That's that's a, a, a photograph taken by the crew of the Apollo 8 on their way to becoming the first humans to actually fly to the moon in return. That's our planet. That's our home. That's Earth. That's the only place in the entire universe as old and as vast as it is that you will find human beings. And every human being that has ever lived, no matter how important or how anonymous, has lived on that world. Everything, every event that has ever transpired that could possibly have any meaning to you or I has taken place on that blue orb. The Apollo moon landing, the astronauts that landed on the moon, 
took off from that planet. All of the founders of all of the religions all over the world, the ones that actually existed and the ones that were mythical, either existed or are said to have existed on that planet. Every horrible thing that ever happened, every tsunami, every terrorist attack happened on that planet. Every birth, every death, the time that I stood watching my grandfather gasp for air in the hospital a few hours before he died and then I leaned over on the bed and kissed him on the forehead before I left the last time I ever saw him alive, that was on that planet. Everything that ever happened to you that meant shit to you, every person who you ever cared about, right there. I can put my hand over it. That's how tiny it is. That's how precious it is. Does that give my life meaning? I should damn well hope so. Does it give your life meaning? I don't know. Maybe Jesus gives your life meaning. Maybe following the teachings of Muhammad gives your life meaning. That's, it's not for me to judge whether or not the things that give your life meaning are worthwhile. Just like it's not for my Christian buddy to judge whether or not my life can truly have meaning because the things that are important to me are not the same things that are important to him. What gives your life meaning is what gives your life meaning. And I can say for myself, as an atheist, as an American, as a human being, the things I've just rambled on about for the last couple of minutes are what give my life meaning. My wife, my family, my friends, my life itself, my too short existence in this amazing universe, on this amazing planet. They're what give my life meaning. I don't need to look for anything that isn't there. I don't need to suppose a God or a Jesus or any other kind of supernatural being, any other kind of deity to lend my life extra meaning. I can take my meaning from the stuff that is actually here. There's plenty of it. And sometimes it's so overwhelming that I have to sort of step away from it if you really want to know the truth. If I really contemplate, really get down deep into where we are and what we are and where we came from. It's, it's the sort of thing that no religion on the earth can even brush up against. It's a kind of epiphany and a kind of feeling that you just can't, I, I just don't get from a holy book or from a myth. But if you do, more power to you. I'm not going to stand here and tell you that your life is meaningless if you follow Jesus. If that's your thing, go be happy. Follow Jesus. But please, as a favor to me, as your friend, as someone who wants to be friendly to you, please let's not assume that because my beliefs are different than your beliefs, that my life is meaningless. I may think that your religion is bullshit, and I do. Make no mistake about that. But I would never claim that because I think your religion is bullshit, that it can't possibly have any meaning to you. Obviously it does. Just like everything I just talked about has a great deal of meaning to me.